Welcome to the Rust How-To Series for Beginners. Hello, I want to describe to you a few more things about building, some do's and don'ts. But let's start with using that fat we got from the animal you killed earlier. The crafting menu is something called a furnace. The fat, which you've hopefully already now rendered into low-grade fuel, is critical to building a furnace. A furnace is going to be one of the first things you build in your home because you can smelt ore in it. Inside your furnace, you need something to burn, wood. And you also want to, you know, choose the material, which in this case is ore. You can also burn sulfur, and you can also earn high-quality metal ore. If you use the middlemost button, you'll split the stack in half. You want to leave one empty spot for the melted stuff that you make, and you want to leave one spot for the coal. Once you turn this on, you'll see. The byproduct is coal, which you don't want to throw away. Charcoal can be used to make gunpowder. You'll want to keep the stuff in a box. And our ore melts down to metal fragments. How do you cook food on a fire? Simple. Just drag it in there. Leave one empty spot for the meat that'll be cooked. Leave one empty spot for the charcoal. Make sure you have enough wood. Now when cooking, if you don't pay attention to it, this happens. You burn your meat. You do have to watch out for it, just in real life. You want to make sure it's perfectly cooked meat, and that's when you get the best benefits out of it. So what is this box? This is a tool cupboard. When you build a home, it requires a certain amount of upkeep. The bigger the house, the more upkeep it requires. In this case here, I built a little tiny house. The upkeep is just a couple under stone and a little bit of wood every 24 hours. As it's read here, bases left unattended without enough resources will be destroyed. So your building will start to decay over time if you don't keep feeding it material. Once you have your basic base, you may feel you want a little bit more protection. So there's something we have to do called honeycombing. Instead of adding a square base, we add triangle bases. This is something I do all the way around. The angles allow us to put a lot more walls up. I forget to put the strong side out. You know, upgrade it. That provides another layer wall and cap the end of it. And now you've added two whole layers on the outside in the same space you'd normally put one. Once you've smelted enough metal, it's time to craft your door. You want a metal door? And you want a code lock. Wooden doors are just not good enough. They can be smashed through, a flamethrower can burn them down. Whereas a metal door, got a code lock, are much tougher. Code lock, when you put it on, make sure you put a code on. And after that, it's locked. You see the red, you know it's safe. You can open it. Anybody that doesn't know the code, tries to enter it in, we get zapped. Always upgrade to stone or metal. A wooden base can be burnt down very, very easily. You might be wondering, why two doors? This is called an airlock, and it's something you absolutely have to do when you build. 
A lot of people like to just sit outside your door and wait for you to open it and shoot you when you walk out. Airlock is a door at least you can close along the way, so if somebody does that to you, they can get no further than just right here. They don't get your base, they don't get all the way inside, they don't get your tool cupboard. Safety first, folks. Oh.